Jennifer. Well, while the government says it hasn't made up its mind yet as to who our next uh, uh, Governor General will be, but it looks as though it might be the former Head of Defence for General Peter Cosgrove. I will get it out, I promise. <laughs> he might be set to be our next GG. So what will he be doing? And uh, will we get to refer to him as General Governor General? <laughs> Last month, the Governor General threw her support behind the Republican movement. Today, we hear she's being replaced. Coincidence? Yes, actually. Quentin Bryce started the gig in 2008 and five years is the standard term for Governors General. That's right, the plural is Governors General, just like Mothers-in-Law, Prime's Minister and Diet's Coke. These are all true's fact. General Peter Cosgrove is tipped to take the job in March, provided Her Majesty gives him the old Buckingham hell yes. It's the Prime Minister's pick, effectively, and the Prime Minister is the one who makes that recommendation to the Queen, and the Queen will follow that recommendation. True's fact, if the Queen is on holidays, royal approval can also be given by Helen Mirren. They swear in the government after an election. They also swear in ministers. They also appoint federal judges and commissions and sign bills into law. It's basically a ceremonial role, apart from that one time when the GG went mad with power and sacked the Prime Minister. But apart from that, it's all shaking hands, nodding seriously and signing stuff. Actually, Quentin and Kay Rudd are playing noughts and crosses. True fact. So, after a long and distinguished military career, does the General really want to spend his retirement in a job which even the current title holder considers redundant? Professor David Flint is the National Convener of Australians for a Constitutional Monarchy. Now, David, the current Governor-General thinks that we should be Republic, and as a monarchist, aren't you obliged to agree with her? <laughs> no, not at all. It, it was an unusual statement. It was a, re really against the convention that uh, governors general don't talk about things political, but uh, certainly I don't think that, and I don't think uh, the uh, majority of Australians do, going by the referendum in 1999 and the opinion polls since then. David, how do you feel about the coalition cozying up to the military like this? Are they expecting a coup? <laughs> Not at all. No coup at all. Uh, General Cosgrove is a man who is very much dedicated to the existing constitutional arrangements. He'll prove a very popular appointment if these reports are correct. He's a superb person. And as you know, he led the, uh, the liberation of uh, East Timor. That was a, a brilliant achievement and uh, he was the military leader of that. Now, you're one of the nation's most famous supporters of a constitutional monarchy. You've worked your butt off for the cause. Does that pay off when there's a royal visit in the offing? Are you, are you guaranteed a selfie with little Prince George? <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the way the system works is that you get no advantages by supporting the constitutional monarchy because the incumbents from the Queen down take the view that it's a matter for the Australian people, and that's how it should be. So you'd just be lining the road from the airport, waving a little flag like everyone else, David? Yes, yes, I'll be exactly the same as everybody else, as, well, as I always am. Exactly the same as everybody else. That's the story of the monarchy, yes, all right? indeed. <laughs> well, I hope you get a good posse. Get in early for that royal visit. David, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Guys, let's talk about the...